This Express Training Bites broadcast is brought to you by Promo Journal, a division of Promo Corner. Promo Journal provides fresh, daily content from industry thought leaders, blogs, videos, product features, and live content all in one convenient location. Weekly advertising opportunities are available. Contact sales at promocorner.com to get your message seen. All right, everybody. Happy Tuesday. I hope you're having a fantastic beginning of your week out there. We did just come off of a short week, and so like this is the first long week. I think everybody's back into the rhythm. Uh, our guests and I were just talking before that we feel like there's a lot more people out doing things, and I love to see that, especially because it is summertime. So speaking of that, you are watching Express Training Bites here at Promo Corner or over on Promo Show's Facebook page, on Promo Corner's LinkedIn, Promo Corner's YouTube, anywhere that you can find us on social media. That's where you're going to find this show on the first and third Tuesday of every month. We have a fantastic guest here today talking about some activities that we typically think of in the summertime, going to like running events. We've got Brian Goodell from Bib Boards. Brian, how are you doing, man? Hey, Brian, I'm doing good. Thank you for asking. (laughs) That's awesome. So Bib Boards, like when I first heard it, I was like, is it like a billboard? What, what is, what is this? So what is it just real quick, take two, three minutes to kind of explain what this product is and and what we're talking about today. Yeah. Bib boards um, in itself was an idea that um, started from Rob Greenspoon, my, my former um, patent attorney for my previous invention. And Rob, Rob came to me with this, kind of an idea, um, how to eliminate safety pins in endurance, because he was running the Chicago Marathon in 2009 and uh, was fumbling with safety pins at six in the morning and trying to pin his race bib on. Um, if anybody's done a race, whether it's a, a 5K or a, or a Chicago Marathon or even ultras and whatnot, they give you safety pins and they're, they poke right through your garment. And uh, Rob had... Um, I'd worked with Rob before with my previous invention I mentioned, and and he said, Hey, Brian, I'm going to come up with an idea one day and I want you to be my partner. Well, the original idea that he had um, actually kind of made holes and, and you can kind of see the size of it here. Here's one under armor and you kind of see the backside of it, but the original idea made holes. But when, when we started talking and I said, well, there's gotta be, you know, there's gotta be another thing, another feature um, to it, which is, uh, let's not make holes let's not have magnets. We don't, we don't want to be that. We found that magnets demagnetize your timing chip. Uh, they stick to your Tesla. They stick to your refrigerator. They stick to everything else. So when Rob, Rob came to me, I said, yeah, it's a great idea. He's like, I'm going to file the patent. I said, well, let's wait and let's, let's see what, what happens. So, yeah. I mean, I think the original idea was the pain that people have. We found out, you know, let's just say our, our freshman year was 2017 when we launched. Uh, 20,000 reviews later that, that there's a lot of stories of people like yourself, Brandon, I think you mentioned earlier before we jumped on here is that when you were running back in the day that they gave you safety pins, uh, all the technology and running is new and innovative under armor um, on clouds. Hoka is all about breathable fabrics, comfortable fitted stuff. Viore is something very new. And the only thing that's a hundred year old and outdated is safety pins. And so, when we launch, we, we're, we're, we're trying to eliminate safety pins and bring this new recyclable fastener. So that is awesome. Yeah. I mean, and poking holes in some of that gear. Uh, if, if you are a runner, if you're out there, those brands that he just mentioned, they're not cheap. So you don't want to be destroying that fabric or, or like you said, uh, demagnetizing your timing chip or anything like that. So I think this is a fantastic little fix uh for that issue but uh you brought it into the promotional products industry and i and i'm going to touch on that a little bit later but i kind of want to stay on the product just a little bit more you said you had a previous invention yes i did um my best friend and i uh, came up with a spill resistant lid um that snapped onto beverage cans and just picture a funnel that snaps on the top almost like a sippy cup but it flowed inside and i had some friends that used to use smokeless tobacco. It's a very disgusting habit. And they were expectorating, spitting into cans, Pepsi, Full Throttle, Coke, Mug, you know, um, root beers and and Rockstar Energy Monster. So our invention snapped onto the can. You can customize them and put your logo on the side and whatnot. But you can actually tilt it upside down and it prevented people from drinking it and kids. And uh, so, yeah, we got into over 30,000 retail stores from Walmart to 7-Eleven and 
That is awesome. So you've had some experience with creating retail products, right? And so you saw this need for all of these races. And I was trying to do a little bit of research before we started. And I was like, I'm I'm here in Austin, Texas. And I was like, how many races are there in Texas? Well, if you go to this website that is running in the USA.com and you select Texas, uh, there are 985 pages with about 50 races each that go on all year, all throughout just the state of Texas. So I can't imagine how many other races there are that you can be a part of. So is that, was that kind of the inspiration for the ideas? Like see that little need for, to replace those safety clips, but those safety pins, but with a much better idea, right? That, that's exactly right. You gave me the chills, Brandon. Um, when you said how big the industry is and how broad it is, uh, Texas is a really big one. We're in California. Um, there was some data pre COVID there was 17,000 running events, 500 participants or more, not even content, counting the ones that are small, like corporate runs. Mm-hmm. So like a big one would be J, uh, JP Morgan chase run in San Francisco. I mean, 10,000 people, right? So what we have found in just like Austin, which is where the running event is, we do it every year, picture fleet feet and all the brands underneath one roof at the Austin convention center. We do it every year. Awesome. Um, yeah. So there's, there's so many races. What I have found is that most races are partnered with a, a business or brand, um, mm-hmm. banks, and they're always looking for those sponsorships and they're always looking for those opportunities. And it's, it, they're always looking for something new and unique. It's not just the, 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 sh- the shirt anymore. It's not just the metal. Um, so I think that's, that's the natural fit for, for, um, the promo spaces. That's where we came from. I had several promo companies reach out to us. Um, and I was like, okay, this promo space, I have to get in here fast so let's talk about that because you just you just brought up the two magic words that the promo industry thrives on which is sponsorships and partnerships right and and that is the the key thing with races right there they are usually sponsored and then they're or they're usually for a good cause so Mm -hmm. to come up with a product that can be used at every race that's kind of a big thing so how how did you get into the promo industry? Who what, were you? So you said you were 2017. When was your first show in the promo industry? Our first show was 2020, right? A month or so before kind of the news released everything. But um, I had actually been taking promo orders um, and started understanding what PPI even spelled, what ASI meant. Um, but I had, you know, a promo company brought me this company, they're Abbott. Abbott, it's a big pharmaceutical company. A promo company brought me this company, St. J- I mean, uh, this nonprofit, St. Jude's. A promo company started reaching out, brought me universities. Uh, um, one of my favorite was Halo. They just reached out and they're like, hey, you've really got to, you know, can we get special pricing? And I was like, what does coded mean? And uh, all this, all these uh, parameters, and, and it was new for me. So what I had to do was take ourselves out of, selling direct because I didn't know what it was to, to be honest, Brandon. And I, and I, and I said, okay, I'd rather have sales people out there and let us just do the supplying of it to the distributors. And wow, I, I got these people that have relationships and that they're go-getters. And, and I'm like, okay, I've got to do this. So yeah, in 20, I signed up and, and went to my first promo show. And I, I, uh, I had a line um, probably about 15 people deep just to talk to me and and about this and you know what's interesting is they were runners so runners or cyclists or triathletes that were also promo reps and distributors so that was pretty cool it's so cool i mean this industry does bring people from all walks of life and so it's really cool to be able to grab that niche of runners and and bring them to the forefront in the promo industry that's really cool that that was your first show in 2020 unfortunately the events after happened so were you in vegas this last year as well Yes, we were. Awesome. Yeah, we were. So our first, our first one was twenty. I, I think I counted, a hundred ninety-eight uh, promo companies came by. I ended up doing probably thirty to fifty orders. I can't tell you. And then, this last one, we had two hundred and seventy-eight um, came by, stopped by, dropped their card off, and then those led to quite a few orders. Um, big promo companies and small ones. Um, oh, hundred so percent. Yeah. It was really it was this this last one. I, I won't name who he is, but he's from Big One. He 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 yelled at the whole place. He said, "Best invention ever in promo," and I've been here for thirty years. 
so we launched these these are soft this is a chick-fil-a logo which did and if you can see they're made from pvc so these snap on just like our traditional but these are lightweight we put them on oh. all these watches but you can see here how they they can snap on something with a hole or without a hole so this is just one way that we can merch these um but we came out with mini metals so think of a lapel pen we call this the lapel pen killer uh, you can see that but it's our patented technology on the back again a hundred year tech handy benjamin button if you remember him these are apparel friendly kid friendly mom approved tested by 250,000 runners a cyclist so we launched that at, at this last show and we had we had uh, several people come by and they're just they just said wow coolest thing since pop sockets um ironically um i'm very fortunate to have those guys guiding us and advising us um in in the space of promo and humbly i'm just trying to get better that that's so cool and, and that's all like when we when we talk about those partnerships between the distributor and then suppliers like yourself that's that's all any distributor ever wants to hear is that that a supplier is constantly trying to do better so so coming from retail into the promo industry, that is that is quite a shift because you're going from anybody can be your customer to now you're focused on who you're marketing to. So, and, but you have some great mentors with the guys over at PopSocket, which is is fantastic. What are some of the the good things that you've experienced in promo? Now you talked about your you know getting to meet all those runners and everything. What what are some good experiences about promo versus dealing with retail? Um, so good experiences. What I've learned in promo is that when you're a seasoned promo rep, you have a relationship with brand X or corporate X and you see the new innovative idea and it doesn't take me long. Or a matter of fact, a lot of times they're coming up with ideas on where to go with it, where I'm typically saying, go here, go there. This is a way to use it. Or, and they're coming to me with all these great. And I go, how did you, you're basically like sitting in on our meeting. So it's, it seemed a lot of the times that they totally get it before the, the brands. That's awesome. That is so cool. And yeah. And being able as a supplier to be able to listen to those distributors and be able to kind of guide your business, stay with your core product, stay with your core idea, but be able to guide the product into their niche or need is, is very cool. One of my favorite movies is robots with Robin Williams. And, and one of the things in the, that he said that always sticks with me and I always quote this part of the movie, but it's see a need, fill a need. And I think that's what you guys have done here at Bibboard. So that's, that's really cool. What are some of the challenges? We've we've talked all these great things. <laughs> what are some of the challenges with both coming up with a brand new product and then also introducing it to the promo industry? I think one of the challenges is push versus pull. Um, you know, it's it's kind of a how do if I tell you that you know my my baby's really cute with dimples at the same time. Um, every product we see, a lot of the time, I also think a lot of the brands say, "Hey, go find me this product." So one of the challenges we've had, um, we're probably in a hundred plus retails, retail stores right now. So it's not 30,000 like my previous, but it's, it's growing. Um, the request versus the push, right? Um, I always like to, you know, be the one that shows up with a cool new toy on the playground. That's just me. I want everybody to play with my ball. So I got it. You can't play with it unless it's, you know, you're playing with me. And I think that's an advantage we have for our distributors is that if they show it to their customers right now, they can be the first to show something unique. Um, and I think brands want something new and novel. And how do I know is because the brands kept reaching out to the race directors and, and, and wanting to just bring them our product. And so the race directors started bringing it to us. What we want with uh, promo is if they say, Hey, once they show it, they touch it, feel it. It's kind of like, Oh, I get it. Cause everybody loves a lapel pin, but they hate the holes. Um, everybody knows what gibbets is for a crock, but why would you do that when it's safer to send your kid to school with your corporate logo? Or could you wear this? Like I'm wearing American flag here today. Could you wear this on your, you know, next zoom call and, and show your, like we just did airheads candy. Like these are, this is, I want, I think that's the challenge is getting them to go and saying, this is actually the coolest product out there right now. That is, 
That is so cool. And it's it's so hard to ride that high, but you guys have been doing it for uh, th through the pandemic, which is amazing, right? Because you, you talked about starting the product in, in 27 and then, uh, or 17 and then uh, in 2020, but then staying through the course and being there again and coming up with new stuff as you've talked to your distributors. That is really cool. And it's something that is awesome about a niche supplier like yourself, other than the the me too suppliers where they've all got the exact same products. We all, they, we, they probably get them from the same factories overseas. So where are, where are bib boards made? Are they made here? Do you guys make them over overseas? Where, where, where do you guys do uh, We, we have a print facility here. That's um, awesome. That we print everything on demand here. Um, we do have a factory as well. Yep. Um, but I mean, we can do quick turn right away here. Same day. I'm, I've got maybe two to 2 million plus products just on hand here so um did the last minute things we don't even charge rush fees um you know things like that but yeah well because you understand the industry you're working in runners are not exactly like we'll think of our shoes our jerseys our shirts what we're going to eat two weeks before how we're going yeah. to train all sure. of that but the day before the race we forget how that we need to actually attach that thing to us mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's you know, awesome the, the organic uh, uh natural uh, progression was our bib boards were being wear, worn as a daily charm expressional piece like St. Jude's we saw people wearing them after as kind of a hey I just did a St. Jude's and so that kind of led us into the 3D you know wearables you know yep. these um, these are an expressional piece um, instead of going with you know look at this I just had, that was on my desk that magnet stuck to this sharp lapel pen on accident so that this was given to me by St. Jude's actually and then I made them. So those, you got option A, holes, pins, danger, or you go option B, which is going to be, this one says I do it for the metals. And and letting the letting your customer know um, and let them make the decision, hey, do you prefer holes or do you not? Um, do, you, do you want something that's, that's new and unique or would you like to go? And lapel pins are fantastic. I mean, people have been collecting them forever. I mean, I used yeah. to collect them as well. Yeah. But what happens, they end up, you don't wear them because you're wearing a new Lululemon top. Um, and you don't want to put holes in it. Matter of fact, Lululemon didn't even want to do a race because they had to put safety pins in it. But we ended up supplying them through a partner. That is so cool. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a huge fan of lapel pins, but that's because when I go out to trade shows or whenever I'm leaving the house, if I'm not on just this show or something like that, I'm usually wearing a, a sport jacket. So it's got the, you know, button slit. So it's okay to put a lapel pin in there because it's already got the cut there. But I'll never put a lapel pin on my right-hand side because there's no cut there, right? So and I don't want to pick that fabric. So maybe you're right. Maybe maybe you have just come up with the lapel pen killer. That is uh, that is very interesting marketing. Speaking of some good marketing, uh, we talked about it, and I want to mention it here because I think it's so cool. But you guys were actually part of a Comcast commercial. Is that correct? We were, yeah. Just one of those. Uh, they're kind of cheesy because they make you do this whole, like, and I had to do that take a bunch, but yeah, we, we were, we were selected. I think they were, they like to do the restaurants and the local gym and things like that. But I think uh, when they approached us, they were just thinking of a, of a new kind of an outdoor endurance brand story. So yeah, I, I was on a Comcast commercial, went national and uh, all my friends made fun of me for it. <laughs> that is so cool. Uh, man, we talk about that all the time here in the promo industry that like, you know, we're super popular inside of our industry, but yeah. You uh, you had a nationwide commercial, so props to you, man. So uh, coming into the promo industry, that's got to be easy pickings. Then. <laughs> so, uh, Brian, dude, thank you so much for kind of telling your story, showing us those new products, giving us the future look into uh, what you can do by creating a product and managing the building and the growth of the business through the promotional products industry. And thanks for choosing the promotional products industry because there's a lot of new products out there that people don't want to bring to the to, to promo so thanks for doing that yeah absolutely it's it's fun i I'm, I'm here to stay i'm not going anywhere i've made a lot of friends in promo and um yeah i'm, I'm still a freshman that's how i look at it um I, i'll be stuffed in the garbage can i get it but one day uh i'll i'll, I'll be a senior hopefully and <laughs> no i i really i like the promo industry and uh yeah we'll, we're here to stay
That is awesome. I really do hope. I can't wait to see what you guys do with this. You're already making some huge strides just in the few years that you've been here. And uh, we'll definitely bring you on here in the next year or two and do a revisit and see what new products you've put on. Does that sound good? Oh, I'm in. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching Express Training Bites. And this is Express Training Bites. It is on the first and third Tuesday of every month, bringing you some fun little educational tidbits while you're enjoying that that bite on your quick little break. All right, guys, have a good rest of your day. We'll see you on the third Tuesday. Thanks, Brandon.